morning everyone welcome to youtube channel of meteor international academy for nursing today we'll start the five important mcqs as usual i hope you are preparing well for the exams before starting the session we'll start with small motivational quotes every morning you have two choices first one continue to sleep with your dreams or wake up and chase them that's depend upon you okay we'll start today's question what is the ideal temperature for storage of vaccines 1 to 10 degree celsius 2 to 8 degree celsius 5 to 10 degree celsius 1 to 5 degree celsius for all the vaccines some certain amount of temperature should be maintained in the refrigerator so what is that ideal temperature so the answer is 2 to 8 degree celsius so the ideal temperature for the storage of vaccine this temperature range is necessary to maintain a potency of the effectiveness of the vaccines if the temperature is below 2 degrees celsius it become freezing okay so that will damage the vaccine if it is more than 8 degrees celsius it leads to the vaccine become degradation and lost its effectiveness okay that is efficacy it will be lost so that so i we have to maintain a 2 to 8 degrees celsius as the ideal temperature to storage of the vaccines clear yes next question and the greatest risk factor for alzheimer's disease so the greatest risk for the alzheimer disease is exposure to nicotine gender age genetics so what is the correct answer for the greatest risk factor for the alzheimer disease while reading this question you can understand that all four are the greatest risk for the alzheimer disease but one among this four is most greatest okay all are the risk for the alzheimer disease the greatest risk goes to the answer is age so age is the greatest risk when compared to the other risk factors in exposure to the nicotine gender genetics all this conditions also the alzheimer disease can happen but more greatest risk is goes to the age because when the person developing when the person getting age the patient a person will have the changes in the brain okay uh, as a patient risk for the significantly increases uh, like neurofibril tangles will form plaque formation in the uh, brain so all this condition leads to the alzheimer's disease so the age is the greatest risk factor clear மத்த எல்லாத்துலயுமே வந்து நம்மளுக்கு ரிஸ்க் அதிகமா இருக்கு பட் ஏஜ் தான் வந்து ரொம்ப அதிக சான்சஸ் ஏன்னா ஏஜ் ஆகும்போது பிரெயின்ல வந்து அப்நார்மல் ப்ரோட்டீன் பிளேக்ஸ் ஃபார்ம் ஆகும் டேங்கிள்ஸ் ஃபார்ம் ஆகும் பிட்வீன் த நியூரான்ஸ் ஸோ ஆல் திஸ் கண்டிஷன்ஸ் அல்ஜிமர் டிசீஸ் த கிரேட்டஸ்ட் ரிஸ்க் ஃபேக்டர் கொஸ்டின் நம்பர் த்ரீ சப்சான்சியா நயக்ரா ப்ரொவைட்ஸ் டேஷ் ஃபார் தி ஸ்டயாட்டம் ஸோ த ஆன்சர் ஆல்ரெடி கிவன் இட் இஸ் டோபோமைன் so the substantia nigra is a region where the brain produces the dopamine then it will goes to the striatum from the striatum the dopamine will be delivered to the all over the brain we'll see the picture you understand the substantia nigra where the dopamine is produced and it will be sent to the striatum striatum is another part of the brain i'll show the picture of that too. okay so you can see it here this is the substantia nigra part where the dopamine is secreted from here the green color part you can see is a striatum so from substantia nigra dopamine go will send to the striatum from that it will send to the other part of the brain so this is the pathophysiology of dopamine where it is secreted and where it goes from that it will be distributed so substantia nigra secre secreted part and striatum it will go there from striatum it will be distributed all over the brain clear so the answer is c dopamine you know dopamine has various functions like movements rewards and motivation okay so when there is an increased dopamine it leads to the what schizophrenia decreased supply of dopamine leads to the parkinson disease so that everyone knows i hope yes next pd is common among people with pd is nothing but parkinson disease okay 
Parkinson disease is common among people with whom? Options, long-term exposure to the copper, lead, iron or manganese, long-term exposure to the hot springs, long-term exposure to the sun, long-term exposure to the cold. So among these people, which people are more prone to get, more common to get the Parkinson's disease? The answer is the person who is exposing to the option A, person who is exposing long-term exposure to the metals, okay, metals like copper, lead, iron, manganese. What happens when a person is continuously exposed to the metals, these metals will accumulate in the brain. So that leads to the Parkinson's disease not other options, okay? Option A is the correct one. Next. Question number five. Osteoarthritis is affecting the distal interphalangeal joints. That is, first finger joint from the fingertip is known as. So here also answer already given. It is Heberden's notes, okay? Osteoarthritis affecting the distal interphalangeal joints. We have two interphalangeal joints. One is proximal, one is distal. So distal is related to the Heberden's nodes. And proximal is related to the Boucher's nodes. Okay? Richard's nodes, there is no uh, Richard's nodes like that. It is just they given for the confusion purpose. Only we have Boucher's nodes and Heberden's nodes, which are related to the osteoarthritis. But the question is asking distal interphalangeal joints. We have... This is distal interference, this is proximal. So when there is a, the first line you can see it here, this is distal interphalangeal joints. Here where we will get a Heberden's nodes. I'll show the picture. You can see it here. This is distal interphalangeal joint. This is proximal interphalangeal joints. When the patient is having the osteoarthritis, he will have the osteopites over the Heberden's nodes and Boucher's nodes, that is, distal interphalangeal is called Heberden's. Proximal interphalangeal is called Boucher's nodes. What is osteophytes? This growth is called osteophytes. Bone spurs, spurts, okay, bone spurts, abnormal growth of the bone will happen. Why, why it is happening? When there is a damage to the joints, our body try to solve that, joint, solve that damage by forming the abnormal bone growth. That is called bone spurts or Heberden nodes or Boucher nodes. Heberden means distal, Boucher means proximal. That you have to remember. Okay? Okay, that's all about today's session. I hope you understood this class. Whoever are not subscribed our channel, please kindly subscribe and press the bell icon button. We'll see day after tomorrow. Thank you so much.